Hey people, Philip Blank here, and today I will be walking you through a DIY board and batten wall. Now, my wife was wanting one made for the nursery before the baby comes, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to walk you through all the steps, all the materials, and everything you need to go ahead and build one on your own, along with painting it and finish it afterwards. Now, first things first for the room is getting everything planned. So I went ahead and made a CAD model up of my room and everything I want. And I went through and added all the trim work up to get the summary of how much material I'd need. Um, I also have all my measurements and stuff in here rather than having to put it down on paper. Definitely not something that has to be done, but for me, it's something I enjoy and help, help me out. Now I went ahead and laid out all the tools I'll be needing for the project, minus everything I'll be using for painting at the end. Starting off, we got our screwdrivers, taking off the outlet covers, tape measures, get everything measured properly. Levels, you want a bigger level typically, but since I have a laser level, that is what I will be replacing a large level with, so don't need that. I got pry bar to salvage my current trim board as I want to put it back on. I'm not going to be using the brad nailer, so I just got some finished nails and my hammer. And then also the speed square to keep my angles right and also help with the cutoff saw. I got the putty knives for helping remove some of the old caulk along with the razor blade there for my trim and some sanding sponges for finishing it afterwards with whatever I caulk. Also, we'll be using some Alex Plus caulking for the finish trim and some glue anywhere that I am not mounting my trim boards to the studs behind. Caulk on those. Now, material selection is a massive part of what you're going to be doing with your board and batten wall. You can really decide between a narrow, if you want a lot of slender battens, or if you would like, say, fewer but thicker ones, like a three inch or a four inch. The most important numbers that you'll need is the overall length of what you're gonna be wanting, and that is gonna tell you how much of the material that you're gonna buy. Now, for my boards, the board is the part that goes across, the batten is the vertical. I wanted a little bit thicker, so I went with a one by six on the bottom, and that'll be behind the trim board, and a one by four, which will be going along the top. So I went ahead and catted it up, and this is just to give me my general dimensions. Again, I put what I am going for, but I will base it off of the material available at the hardware store. But the thing that is important to me is the lengths. So at those, I have nine slats that are 50 inches high. That means I'll have to get boards that are at least 105, 110 inches long that I can cut in half. So then I won't be able to have two. So then I'll just have to get five boards and I'll have one spare. I'm using M MDF, uh, which is a composite particle board, quite a bit cheaper, but it also doesn't warp as bad as a pine can, but you also don't want to get it wet. First thing we'll be doing is I want to salvage my trim, and, I don't wanna, and I'm going to move that in front of the baseboard that I'm going to be installing with the batten wall. So my first step will be to remove the caulk, pry that off, and try and do it gently so that I can keep using the trim board afterwards and put it back on the front to match the rest of the room. Now since I'll be prying these off, you want to go through and find where your nails are currently. So you can usually see them in the finish, but that is where I'll have to work. So we slid that out. Now watch these barbs. Go ahead and pop them all through. Now you also want to make sure you pull all the nails still in the wall for our next surface. Now because I want my baseboard to be recessed behind their baseboards, I'm going to have to put in the corner this depth of board so that I can drop it straight down below. So what I'm gonna do with that is mark my distances top and bottom. Yep, there's a nail down in there. Slice 
just through it. The cord should be able to drop right down in there. Now for me, I went with an odd number of battens so that I would have a dead center of the room. If I would have gone with an even number, I would have had one on each side of that. But since I went with nine, I can have this as my center, and then I will divvy up the space between based off of how many slats I have, and then that will be my dead center of each of the materials that I will use. Now what I've got here is the wood set up on the sawhorses. I'm gonna do it all in a single pass. So I want us to be the exact dimensions of my wall. And I was right for me at 142. So what I've got is, this is clamped down, so it's solid on my sawhorse. And then I'm gonna use my speed angle here, and I will clamp this down an inch off from my cut. I line that straight up. I got eye protection and it's a dust mask just to keep the particles out of my mouth, protect my lungs. So safety first whenever you're working with tools. Perfect. We get this in clamped. This is your plane. Welcome to day two of the board and batten wall. Now we have a baseboard in place, but it's currently not mounted. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go through and find the studs of where we're going to be nailing the bottom board to the wall. And I will mark on the wall the spot that I need to put the nails into. Now this is where your level comes into play. This is too small of a level typically because you're not really getting a true feel of what the ends are doing. If you have a longer level, you get a better average of what your actual dimensions are. So again, that's why I'm not using that. And I like my laser level where I can tell from one end all the way to the other how it is set. Now we got putty knives that I'm sliding underneath the board between the carpet. You do want to have a little gap for water. If you have ever water soak in under your slab, you want to have a space in there to keep, keep it off a little bit, and then I'm using my pry bar to just ever so gently adjust the height. Now I'm using a two inch finish nail, and that will be deep enough for my bottom trim to the drywall to the stud. When I do the front trim, I'm not going to be mounting that to the studs in the same way, so I really just have to make sure this is deep enough for my board. Get it just about flush, and then you use a punch Below. You always want it below the surface as we'll come through with putty afterwards and we're caulking and fill that in and you don't want to have to have paint on top of that metal. So today what we'll be doing is marking the spot of where all your battens are going to be going. Now for my center, I went through and marked each center line on my CAD file, just on my drawing, and then these are the dimensions that I will use to measure out my wall, and that is where I will mark each spot of where they're gonna go. Oh yeah, one design thing to note. A lot of times your outlets will be connected to a two x four, uh, just in your stud. So in my design, I had to make sure that my battens would not either go on top of the outlet or right on next to. So I made sure to offset it to where my batten was here. My batten goes here, around it, so I'm not gonna have any overlap or covering up of my outlets. All of the center lines on here, I need to mark the centers of each of my battens. So again, I'll use a speed square. It measures right at two and a quarter, so we'll half that to 1.125. Now at some point, you will have to decide if you're going to use the McNails. If you are planning on ever removing this wall, I would not recommend it because this stuff is a pain to get back off. But I don't think I'll ever stay in this house long enough that I will want to take this back off. So I may go ahead and use it, especially because my design, I'm not using the center stud. So the stud would be here, but then I would have to be making sure all of my boards are mounted vertically above those. So since I'm not doing that, nails will not properly hold your trim batten to the drywall, it can just easily come out. So I'll use a mixture of nails and liquid, liquid nails to keep 
things all connected. Now a lot of people build board and batten walls by putting the bottom board and the top board and then you fit in your vertical battens based off of whatever dimensions you have. Because I know my bottom plane is level and I know these are pretty much identically all the same, I'm going to go ahead and do the vertical battens and then I'll be able to set my board on top and know it's level and maybe make some micro adjustments as needed. Okay, we've got the battens up, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my liquid nails. Probably a little generous on the liquid nails, but again, I'm not planning on ever taking this off. What I found is it's best to work ahead with the glue, so I have two that are already laid out that have the liquid nails on it, and you're giving it some cure time, because it takes about 15 minutes before it sets fully and I don't want to stand holding this up against the wall for 15 minutes. So I've got glue on here, it's been sitting for just a bit. Bring it up, line up my line on the bottom. So now, you go through. And you roll the glue out. Well, the hard part is done. So, intermission, that took some time to get all the vertical battens in there. Uh, my wall has some curvature in it, just bowing here. So, I had to, you can see, really try and put my liquid glue in and try and take it down a little bit. It took a while just standing there holding it. I also have another one over there doing this very similar thing. Just trying to get the board as flush as possible to the wall before using the caulk. So we got the board up, level, perfectly across. I'm happy with it. So what I'll be doing is going straight above wherever my studs were on the bottom baseboard and mounting this on the same. By using the studs again I won't have to use any of the liquid nails and then I'll be able to caulk just above anywhere that there's curvature again with the wall. So fit up is just perfect. Here we are day three of the board and batten wall. Now this again could all be just about done on a single Saturday but I've had quite a few intermissions and distractions coming in and out so I've not been working out consistently but so what we've got so far is we've got everything mounted on the top and the bottom all the battens are in place as well and glued to the wall the only thing left I have to do is adjust the trim so that I can use my old trim board and mount it back on the bottom where it came off so I have to uh, fill up one of the edges just to be able to slide it in and mount that and then afterwards we're going to use our spackling and caulk to get the wood ready for painting now on my ends I'm going to want to make sure that it lines up with my current trim because that's more important to me than this being level. I just need it to match in the corners. So I'll hold it down, get a nail started. Okay, everything on the wall is done, so the next step will be to fill all the nail holes with spackling. I'm doing the spackling first before the caulking because this can take a little bit longer to dry on top of, you have to sand it. Press it into the hole and make sure you get enough in there. You'll always be able to sand off any of the excess. Get it in there and then you lightly graze over the top of it. Now one thing, I tried to keep all my backboard nails below the trim level so that I wouldn't have to be double patching holes. So if I would have nailed here, I would have gone there, but I kept all the nails right below the surface level of the trim. Now that the spackling is dry, I'm going to use a sanding sponge at 100 grit to go through and sand down the surface to get it all flush with the wood. 
All the spackling is done and sanded, so next I'm going to be doing a very gently damp cloth to go and wipe down all the surfaces before I caulk. You want to have a good surface for the caulk to adhere to so you don't have any peeling off later on. Now for the caulk, I'm using Alex Plus Latex. It's good for trim because it's got some flex to it, yet it's sandable and paintable. So I'll be going through all the seams, and I want to make sure I have no gaps and adhere my trim to my wall and the trim to itself. So we've got everything caulked, all within the single tube. So the final step now before paint is to go through and sand down any surfaces, any of the leftover from the uh, spackling and any of my little edges and stuff from the caulk. All right, now it's been a couple days and we went ahead and got everything painted together as family, so I didn't get footage of that. But what we used was the Bear Premium. It's their, even though it says premium, it's their bottom line, their Bear Premium, Ultimate, and then their Marquee, and now Dynasty. So we went with the cheapest option. Uh, our white, we went with Simply White. And the blue-green color you kind of see is called Nature's Gift. So we used about half a, a little over half a gallon for all the trim and the wall of the white. And we used a gallon and just a little bit of this guy uh, for all the green in the room. We roll the walls, that would give you the easiest, consistent uh, finish for everything. Though, for the white wall, it was brushed. So all this was brushed together, gives you the nice lines that are consistent along all of this. And then the room was rolled with two coats of the green. Um, overall, we're very happy with how the project turned out. Uh, the cost breakdown, the total price of everything in this room that we had to do material-wise in the paint came out to right at $320. So. If you don't own the tools and some of the things you're going to need, you'll have to add that on. Um, but for us, that's that's about what we had to put into the saw. The lumber itself was 130 bucks. Um, the paint we had three gallons, a gallon of trim, and two gallons for the green on the walls was about 40 bucks a piece, so 120 for that. Now, throughout this project, I definitely recommend really trying to put your effort into doing your best work through it all. Every little defect at the beginning will just compound upon itself of if you leave, say, spackling or caulking and then you paint on top of it, that little bump will grow and grow and you'll see it more noticeably. So the more effort and work you put in towards the beginning of the project and as you go through it, definitely the better the outcome will be. In the end though, I definitely think this is a very much a beginner type project. You do have to have a few technical skills like being able to safely use your saw and sanders just to make sure that you don't get hurt through it all. But if you are looking at starting a project and you're like, okay, I don't have much woodworking experience, this is definitely one that you should be able to do. You're using all straight edges for your cuts. Um, you're just doing simple paint, hand brush, and then roll the walls. You don't need to spray. You don't need to purchase any extra equipment. So even if you wanted, a lot of the stuff can be done with a handsaw. If, uh, that's if your budget's even tighter. So all I can say is make it happen. If this is what you're wanting, go ahead and do it. The only thing holding you back is you. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'll be doing my best to help you out if you have anything, run into any issues. So that's all I got for you. Peace.